Welcome to SPNN's Forum. I'm your host, Sani, and we are today in Elpis Enterprises. They are an organization that actually works with homeless youth, and they recruit them, and they train them, and get them ready for the work industry. Thank you so much for joining us again today on SPNN's Forum. I'm your host, Sonny Brown, and we are at Elpis Enterprises. As you can kind of see in the background, they're doing a lot of stuff. It is actually an organization that works with homeless youth. They recruit them, they train them, and prepare them for the working industry. And to tell us a little bit more about this, I have Paul Ramsor with me today. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. Thanks for being here. So first, before we get into the discussion of like how you're recruiting the young people, like how did all of this get started? What was the purpose of Elpis Enterprise? Elpis was incubated by the Minneapolis JCs Charitable Foundation back in the early 90s. Okay, JCs. Uh, uh, the Junior Chamber of Commerce. Okay, okay. Uh, they had a separate foundation and they had some funding and they wanted to develop some proprietary youth programs. Okay. And Elpis uh, was incubated from with that group back in the early 90s and spun off and set up as a separate nonprofit in 2002. Okay. And we moved to this location in 2004. Okay. And our mission is to work with youth experiencing homelessness or who are at risk of homelessness or are vulnerable to homelessness uh, in a work readiness program and help them understand the expectations of the workplace so mm -hmm. that when they get the job after Elpis, they that they're doing. going to be more successful. Right. So out of all of the, because it sounds like this organization said we want to help youth it sounds like and then they put set aside funding and that's where you guys came in why why homelessness why not other issues why take on well homelessness? at the time we were working with neighborhood kids mm -hmm. uh, who were at risk mm -hmm. uh, and neighborhoods had identified some of these youth that they thought needed help and so that's who we were working for working with and at the in, uh, in 2002 when we set it up as a as its own nonprofit, Elvis was very, very small, and it wasn't able to support uh, full-time staff or even part-time staff at that point. And so I went to work for an organization called YouthLink, and YouthLink works with homeless youth. Right. And the youth in the drop-in center at YouthLink needed a way to legitimately put money in their pocket to help them pay for some of the things that they needed mm -hmm. uh, to survive. And so we started programming with YouthLink and doing crisis employment for youth coming in off the streets into the drop-in center. And so they were working here in the t-shirt shop, they were working in the wood shop, uh, and, uh, and that became our mission. And then over the years, we've just uh, continued to add more programming mm -hmm. and uh, build the business. And so now the business can now support some part-time staff and a full-time staff uh, and work with about 40 youth a year. So. So are you, I was gonna ask, are you directly connecting with homeless youth through YouthLink or do you have like a team that's, that's, that's combing the Twin Cities for that or? Well, we don't do our own outreach. Okay. We rely on referrals from organizations okay. that work with youth experiencing homelessness either in drop-in centers, providing mm -hmm. basic needs, or provide supportive housing. Mm -hmm. So we work with, in St. Paul, uh, safe, safe Zone, Mm -hmm. uh, and I Young mm -hmm. uh, is another organization in Minneapolis. We work with YouthLink. Mm -hmm. We've taken referrals from The Bridge. We've had referrals from Avenues for Homeless Youth. Mm -hmm. um, and then we work with a number of other partners that also refer youth like Hired, mm -hmm. uh, You Lead with the Ramsey County Workforce Solutions, mm -hmm. um, Right Track in, in St. Paul, Step Up in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. who it's also all, all identify well. youth. And youth have to be referred. We don't do our own outreach and so we don't take youth uh, walk-ins right. we work with these referring agencies okay and so I was gonna ask too I asked because I was homeless as a youth and right. so I was wondering do do they are these youth like are the parents in the picture or their their parents are often in the picture to, mm -hmm. to some degree okay 
uh, we don't necessarily interact okay. with the parents. A lot of these youth are living independently in, in mm -hmm. transitional living programs or supportive housing programs. Uh, but they are, in, in, in a lot of ways, connected to their parents, just not in a traditional sense. Right. Okay. Okay. So tell us about the programs that they can uh, be integrated in or the programs that they're, that they're introduced to when they get here and how that's helping them get into the workforce. So ELPIS was started with the idea of a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. And how could a social enterprise help fund a nonprofit organization and work with youth at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so the social enterprises that we run, we have run a full service screen printing operation. We do custom t-shirts and, and apparel and other items for mostly other nonprofits and a lot of youth groups. So if, uh, if you were to name a youth program in town, chances are good that we print their t-shirts for them. Mm -hmm. uh, some small businesses and some corporate clients. We also manage a small manufacturing operation. We recycle cedar fencing. And so we work directly with fence contractors as a way for them to recycle old fences that get taken down. Mm -hmm. Instead of going into the waste stream, they get recycled through us. We disassemble all of that wood in inventory and then manufacture a line of products, mostly outdoor related stuff like bird feeders and nesting boxes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. compost bins and planter boxes and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of experiential building workshops out in the community and so it's been our our plan to go out in the community and set up an assembly process and let young people at Parks and Rec and Nature Centers and Community Ed programs come to the table, facilitated by the youth in our program as a work experience, mm -hmm. and build their own project, whether it's a bird feeder or a nesting box or, or something like that. We do something similar on the screen printing operation. We go out and do on-site screen printing with, uh, with youth programs and events and things. But the screen printing operation is mostly inside, working here in the shop, uh, printing uh, custom shirts for, for close to 600 different organizations mm -hmm. in the Twin Cities. And those experiences, working in those experiences, uh, are real, real business experiences and they give young people an opportunity to, to work as a team and to recognize an objective and to follow through on uh, the task for the day, to show up on time, communicate with their team members, uh, problem solve and troubleshoot things that go on with a particular job. Uh, all of that soft skill and it's all work readiness and all of those skills are actually transferable to another job uh, unrelated uh, to the screen printing industry or the woodworking industry. Most youth who come here are coming here because they're looking for work readiness or their case manager mm -hmm. as part of these other organizations are trying to help young people be work ready right. uh, and so that they can keep the next job until they're ready to leave right. and not, not when the employer wants them to right, leave. Right. So every organization that works with the community, they always have a way to gauge their success. How do you know that what you're providing these youth is helping them when they get out to the real world? So we track work readiness from the time they start and into the time they enter. We look for change of behavior mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, in a list of work readiness skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we also track uh, the number of kids that, that obtain employment when they leave the program right. uh, with our help. And we're at about 70% okay. of youth who complete the program and get their next job. Uh, it's something that we, uh, uh, it's a, something we constantly work on and we're trying to always improve those numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a pretty big number though. It, 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 is, a, it is a pretty good number, uh, but uh, it's, it's one we have to stay, where you have to stay on top of mm -hmm. constantly. You know, every youth who comes through the door is a different story and, mm -hmm. and different set of challenges and they have their own, uh, they have their own agenda, right. you know, in lots of ways and so, um, it's a number that we continually work on to try to improve. Okay, so is there, is it, I, I wanted to see some stuff. Is it okay if we look at some stuff? Sure. <laughs> Show me around? Sure. Because this seems scary. I'm not even going to lie. Well, <laughs> you, this bring is, this, uh, you bring this out into the community? No, not this. Okay. Uh, we have some one color presses that we take out in the community. This is a, this is a, Elpis is a manual shop. Okay. Uh, we, uh, these are manual screen printing presses and, um, we, uh, this is a six color press, so we can print uh, up to six spot colors. Right, so each uh, part, kind of like how a printer works, right? Right, okay. right, so each screen can, has a different color, and this is a three color image. This is actually uh, uh, some shirts that we're printing for uh, the Nicolet Open Streets event mm -hmm. that's happening later this month. Mm -hmm. And um, so these will uh, hopefully be finished uh, today, and we'll box them up and get them to them for their event. 
Is it more than one youth? Because it looks like it's a teamwork kind of thing going. Yeah, uh, Jaquan is uh, uh, printing. Uh, Jacob is our trainer. And so Jacob's helping uh, uh, load shirts and take them off and check for quality. Uh, and uh, uh, on any given day, there are other youth here uh, working their schedule. Um, are, they, are the youth, are they still in school? Most of the youth that we work with, our average age is probably 18, 19. Mm -hmm. So most of them have either completed their high school credential or are working on a GED. A lot of them are investigating post-secondary programs or looking for other uh, certifications. Mm -hmm. Every youth who comes into the ELPS program has to have an education plan, okay. something okay. that they're working on. Our focus is on uh, ongoing learning mm -hmm. and, and helping youth understand that that's that that's one of the ways you, you move through life and progress and, continue and, and continue to grow is to, is to be connected in some way to education. Okay. So I was gonna ask, what age group do you work with? I know you said the average age is 18, 19. 16 to 23. Okay, okay. Yep, yeah, 16 to 23. So with the work plan when they come in, is it like, do you guys have a set? There's a training, there's a or? training curriculum. Okay. Uh, we have uh, an AmeriCorps employment navigator who works uh, individually with youth mm -hmm. to put together their placement file okay. and help them organize the skill sets that they're that they already have and the skills that they're learning here uh, to put them into transferable language so when they go out and talk to the next employer that they're they're talking in, in, in language that that uh, the employer can recognize right. so it's not specifically screen printing right. information but transferable language right. uh, helps them work on their resume uh, helps them uh, with interview skills here or AmeriCorps or some an outside uh, here, organization? Here. Oh, okay. So AmeriCorps members here and that person's here for a year. Um, and uh, take advantage of other training opportunities in the community. It might be something at the Workforce Center that we feel is a good opportunity that they should be involved in. So we'd set up a training there uh, with them. We might have uh, people come in and do mock interviews and work with youth on their interview uh, skills, uh, customer service. Uh, issues and then just basic business because help us is a, help us runs these small businesses uh, there's some training around just basic business understanding mm -hmm. and, the, and the different aspects of a small business mm -hmm. are there are there any other organizations that are similar to you that are working with preparing youth for the workforce and if so how are you any different there are uh, organizations and there are a number of them mm -hmm. uh, the Sundance Family Foundation su supports a lot of youth social enterprise organizations and so some of them uh, the cookie card is an example uh, youth express uh, bike shop uh, is another example there's a clothing store uh, that youth run um, and there, there are lots of different um, organizations that run social enterprises or youth social enterprises help us is different in in uh, to, to the extent that that uh, youth are involved here in as many different aspects of the business as possible uh, also, from a funding standpoint, the, the bulk of El the funding at Elpis is through the social enterprise, so it's an, in, an integral part of, of, our, of our budget. Um, and um, um, I, I think those are probably the ways that, that Elpis is a little, bit, a little bit more unique. We have two online stores. Okay. Uh, one, uh, one has uh, some t-shirts. Uh, for sale on it, but that the uh, our main online store handles most of our wood products mm -hmm. uh, and some of our shirt products. It also allows us to have other vendors, uh, and so we have some customers who want to sell their shirts online, but they don't really want to be in the e-commerce business. Okay. So we set up a page for them. They set the selling price. We sell their shirts and print them, mm -hmm. send them to their customer, and then uh, at the end of the month we run a vendor report and they, uh, we share in the profit, or they okay. share in the, in the amount of sale. The other website that we have is an Inksoft platform, okay. and that's a design studio. So you can go in to the design studio, you can design your own shirt, mm -hmm. and create your own, screen, your own shirt, put your order in, pay for it, the order will come to us, we'll print it, box it, and ship it to you. Okay, I have to write that down. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a couple of ideas yeah. I want on a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, so you guys do workshops? We do workshops in the community, both on the screen printing side and the woodworking. We go out in the community. We do about 200 bird feeder 
uh, or woodworking workshops a year, about 200 programs a year okay. for about 4,000 youth uh, throughout the Twin Cities. Okay. Uh, Minneapolis Parks and Rec, uh, we have a relationship with them. If a, if a young person builds a cedar bird feeder at a Minneapolis park, chances are good they're building it with us. Okay. And we work through the Environmental Operations Department with their Neighborhood Naturalist Program mm -hmm. uh, and go out with the naturalist and do educational programs and at, the, and at that same time build something with youth uh, so they can take it home and, and put it in their backyard and, and learn about birds and learn about nature and yeah. their habitat. So, so when you say you go out, you guys aren't doing it like at a park, you're doing it at a center or a, a designated... At a park. At a park, really? All the, all the re almost, almost all the rec centers in Minneapolis. Okay. So, um, any events that you have coming up? We are going to be this Saturday at uh, the oh, Wild. The Wild. We're going to be at the Wild Rice Festival. Okay, that's what that was about. Yep. Okay. We're going to be at the Wild Rice Festival this Saturday on the 24th mm -hmm. of this month. We're going to be at an event up at District Six in St. Paul. Okay. The District Six Community Council. They've got a. They've got an outdoor event, so we're going to be up there building bird feeders. So every so these events that you have, you come out, you either bring your screen printing or your yep. bird feeders, and yep. that's how people are getting to know about. Yep. Okay. Set it up. Get out in the community. We were at Jazz Fest mm -hmm. in St. Paul last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. Yep, yeah. we were there. Okay. Um, we were at. Um, where were we on Sunday? Uh, we were somewhere. <laughs> if if you're not recruiting youth, like from off the streets. What is the purpose of going out, other than your business ventures, what's the purpose of going out into the community and, and, and doing these workshops? Going, going out in the community allows young people to uh, wear a different hat. The young people that are already in here. The okay. young people who are working in the program and who are part of the program, they, they facilitate these workshops in the community. Oh, okay. And so they go out and, and work on their customer service skills and meet people. And they're not out there as a homeless youth. They're out there as a facilitator, as a leader, as an instructor. Uh, and it allows them to, to, to wear a different hat, you know, and be, and be a resource to the community. You know, a lot of young people experiencing homelessness, they're, they're, they're consuming resources. They're, you know, they're, 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 they're using up stuff. And this, this opportunity allows them to, to turn that around and contribute resources to the community and, and, uh, and let the community see what they're capable of doing and, and uh, how it's they handle to themselves. Them that too. It's proving it to themselves. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. So are they? Is are the youth? Are they volunteers here? Are they actually? Everybody, youth, all the youth here are paid. Nice. Yep. No, they're paid. They're either paid through a funding source or they're paid directly by Elpis. Um, Elpis utilizes organizations that have training dollars, and so those organizations uh, either either help pay for the training operation or they or they. They refer youth and their youth are on their training program, but they're training here and working right. here. Some youth are on the Elpis payroll uh, and working here, but, but everybody gets paid. Okay. We do have volunteers right. uh, from the community who serve on our advisory board, mm -hmm. who serve on our board of directors, who come in and help cut wood from time to time, mm -hmm. uh, and who come in and do mock interviews and things like that. So we do have, have volunteers, but all the youth who are working here get paid. Nice, nice. So where, if I'm an organization that works with youth and I really want to get connected with Elpis, how can we contact you to refer our youth? You can go to our website, elpisenterprises.org. Uh, you can call us, set up an appointment, we'll come out, explain our program uh, to you and talk about how youth are referred and the referral process and the training program and, and, uh, and shake hands on the deal. <laughs> Is there anything special they have to do on the website, like a keyword or anything? Nope, nope, there's not. Just send us an inquiry. Okay. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, that, and that happens all the time. So. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Paul, for, thank having, you. for letting us come out here. You bet. Thank you very much. I know much. you guys are working still, yep. so, but thanks for letting us come in. And you bet. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much again for tuning in to SPNN's Forum. If you're just joining us, we're about to get a treat and see some woodwork. I have here with me Shadaria. Yes. I said it right. All right. And then your title at Elpis is? The Woodworking Coordinator. Okay. So first, before we get into the fun stuff, how did you get to becoming the coordinator? Okay. I started off as an intern. Um, I was going at YouthLink. YouthLink is a, a, like a 
place where homeless teens go to get all hygiene products and stuff like that. So I started off as an intern, just basically going to different parks around Minneapolis, help the kids build bird feeders, mm -hmm. until Joshua, the person that was ahead of me, the one that used to be the coordinator, mm -hmm. saw potential in me. So he was like, how about you go over here and try the saws and all that? I'm like, oh, no, no thank you. I don't <laughs> right. want to do that. He was like, well, well, we'll just ease into it. So that's okay. exactly what we did, just ease into everything. And mm -hmm. I just went day by day learning new things. It's just, I guess it, to me, I came naturally because okay, it's not thing. yeah i heard that you kind of were shocked that you even really yes liked doing this. yes because i when i first came here i wanted to be a needle nurse you know when the baby mm -hmm. come out you weigh him wipe him off do yeah. all that yeah. that's what i wanted to do until uh -huh. i built me a bird feeder once i did that i'm like so, oh i could do this and I it's yes i didn't build <laughs> tables i didn't build i didn't build so many things oh, that cool. yes okay I love all right it. so so go ahead and do your thing well and right now i'm just standing down <laughs> this right here is called a bad house a bat house. A bat house. For, just, for bats, like Batman bats. Yeah, okay. real, real bats. Okay. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just standing it down so when, you know, when people grab it or the bird, I mean the bat goes into it, mm -hmm. it doesn't get any slivers or anything like all that. Right, just trying right. to stand it down, make sure it's all right. <laughs> Try to hit all the edges. Right. And so when you're, when you're done with all of these, I, off the top of my head, I was thinking the best place to put this would be like in someone's house. Yes, but you got to be careful where you put it. it would, you would not want to put it in the house. You want to put it. See, some people have bats in their in their attic. Right. So you want to be able to put it to somewhere that bat will be able to find it. Right. So you won't necessarily want to put it in your house. You want to mm -hmm. try to put it outside your house because then they keep going back in there. Because, the, because yeah, the house. Because yeah, my yes, first thought, their house this is, is terrible. There. My first thought was like, is that like a bat trap? So if mm. you got something in your house, you put it up no, in the attic? No, no, no. It, it's I know it looks like it looked like a bat trap, but um, I guess bats don't have too many blooms, so I guess they can slide inside yes, there, so but they're, they're predators can't. Oh. But if you wouldn't believe, at least 10 bats can fit inside Are here. you serious? Yes. Whoop! I'm getting it. <laughs> just crazy just thinking about it. So what else do you make in, so this is essentially, this is the wood shop. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, other than bird feeders and bat houses, what else are you these making? These are most of our products here. We have, we have, um, we have done um, planter boxes, ray bed forms, compost bins, um, Pretty much anything in a, environmental, we can do it. Okay, and so as the coordinator, you work with the other youth. Yes, and I help work. Them. I work with interns, and I try to uh, monitor them to make sure they're basically to help them get job skills. Okay. Try to help them, you know, basically learn organization, um, co uh, what they call um, community service, just things. Just ba the, the basic stuff that skills. they need yes. in order to go out into the real world. Yes, to, basically, yeah, to get them ready for the real world. But it's, we're not too tough on them. You know, right. we do, do be leaning. Okay, you late the first time, <laughs> that's a warning. You know, second time, hey, we might have to say something about it. Third right. time, hey, now you need to be stopped. Stop get on your job. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you don't get no three chances right, in the real right, world. Right, 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 right. All right, well, I'm going to let you get back to work. We just wanted to come in and be a little nosy. Thank you so much uh, for letting us come in. Thank you. And for congratulations for moving your way up. Well, right, thank you. Thank you for actually interviewing me. Thank you. Awesome. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. I'm Sani and you've been watching SPN Inform.